Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, this is the summary for the day of 270 and the 20th of November. Let's start off with um, a statement very, which is kind of weird. Uh, Ukraine in their uh, daily report said that uh, the there is a MiG-31K uh, that flew out of this air base here at uh, Michulishchi, Michulishchi. F air base in Belarus. Uh, you see that this aircraft carries the Kinzhal, the dagger, Kinzhal hypersonic missile, which is capable of hitting basically anything in Ukraine. And uh, every time this thing fly, uh, they are forced to you know, declare an uh, air alarm across all of the country, which is kind of weird. Uh, I'm not sure if this is legitimate or is this just an excuse. But it also shows the threat of a hypersonic missile because the speed of the missile would mean that uh, they can't really even uh, just sound the alarm when the missile is over the Ukrainian air airspace because the aircraft uh, the missiles fly so fast that by the time you sound the alarm the missile would have already struck the target. So uh, this is kind of a very interesting uh, just a statement coming from the Ukrainian uh, report that I find it very hilarious uh, because if they if they're going to fly 24 hours 7 basically you know uh, maybe they just take turn flying uh, then they will have endless uh, air alarm uh, throughout Ukraine for 24 7 so uh, doesn't make a lot of sense to me and um, in the southern front and there, there is no report uh, no fighting reported uh, there is some bombardments across uh, the front line along the Dnipro River, uh, nothing significant. Um, moving on to Zaporizhia line, uh, in the Zaporizhia region, uh, there is report of shelling at Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Uh, the Russian Defense Ministry uh, kind of pissed. They say that on the 19th, the Ukrainian launched 11 shells at the nuclear power plant. And on the morning of the 20th of November, they said they fired uh, two strikes, which is actually uh, 12 shells, it, it exploded uh, between the 5th power generator and a special building and 3 impacted the building between 4th and the 5th power generator and 1 hit the special building's roof and then 10-10, uh, 10, to 10, 10, 10 uh, another 2 shells was fired at the electric power trans transmission line so uh, it's because how the front line have already moved uh, it's, I find it very interesting that the uh, Ukrainians are still shelling uh, Zaporizhia nuclear power plant and Odohoda in general and perhaps they are just trying to prevent uh, the, the Russians from ever using this nuclear power plant for their own uh, power needs you know it's like if I can't have it you can't have it too kind of situation so let's continue to see how this goes about uh, the, the artillery reportedly actually fired from uh, Mahanets and the uh, Russians actually fired counter artillery against uh, the position here. But it's not going to work because uh, artillery in this war usually fire and scoot. So once they fire, they run away. So you can't really do anything. So any any idea that they are they they said the firepower is neutralized is just bullshit. The Ukrainians no longer is at the firing position. Uh, at the very end of the Zaporizhia line over at the Velika Novosilka region, the Ukrainians launched some kind of a I will call it a pincer again. I like to use the word pincer. Anyway, the, there is fighting reported at Vremivka. And interestingly, there is fighting reported at Rivnopil. So, oops. So, at Rivnopil, uh, is, most likely it's coming from one of these locations from Novosilka or Novopil. My gut feeling is that Novosilka is actually under Russian control, but Novopil is actually under Ukrainian control. So, most likely it's coming from Novopil moving towards uh, Rivnopil. And, um, the the action here could actually you know leads to uh, encirclement of the russian forces uh over at Novosilka and vremivka region uh should the ukrainians able to continue to penetrate all the way to uh, makarivka well let's see you know usually it's not so simple you know like how we just draw arrows on the map uh moving on to the donetsk france uh the ukrainians continue their counter offensive uh, against pelivka as well as at slavne so they are continuing to push at the most southern part of this Donetsk front, while the Russians continue to uh, attack Novo, uh, Novo Mihailivka, and fighting is reported at Marinka. And 
Over at the Pisky region, the only fighting reported was at Pervomaisky, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. And uh, that's all from the Donetsk front. Uh, the main action from the Russian side uh, is still mainly coming from the Eastern Front, which is the Bakhmut and the Sivas Front. At the Bakhmut Front, the Russian forces attack Kudyumivka, Klishivka, uh, fighting is reported, and on the Eastern side of uh, Ivanrad and uh, Opaine, there is fighting reported at Bakhmut as well, according to the Ukraine Defense Ministry. And most interestingly is that the resumption of the fighting at Pithorodne. So the fighting at Pihorodne is more significant uh, because uh, it's coming from the northern side whereas most of the fighting we know around the Bakhmut city is coming from the southeast and the southern side of Bakhmut. So for the fighting to be reported uh, over at the northern side or the northeast side of uh, Bakhmut is uh, something to be uh, be concerned of if you are, if you are pro-Ukrainian because this signifies the intention to encircle Bakhmut rather than fight, fighting through the entire city itself. So, but uh, previously we also have reported uh, fighting at Krasno, uh, Krasnahora a long, long time ago, as, which is why you can see the how this thing pops out. And uh, in two days ago, we also reported that there is a uh, Russian forces spotted in the northeastern side of Bakhmut uh, city, around 3.5 kilometers from the city. So, which is why uh, this kind of corroborates uh, the spotting of the Russian forces uh, over the, uh, the northeast side of Bakhmut. So fighting at Pilhorodne and uh, not sure how this goes. Uh, most likely these forces are still the Wagner private military contractors that are fighting around this region. Uh, fighting is reported at Bakhmutske according to the Ukraine Defense Ministry and uh, fighting is reported at Yakolivka. And over the Sivas front, the Russians continue to push for Bilhorivka as well as at Sperne. And uh, the Luhansk People's Republic forces is fighting at Bilohorivka. They are still unable to hold this position. This is an extremely difficult position, uh, city or town to capture because there is a lot of uh, uh, hilly areas around here. Uh, so you know, losing it at the first place is really a kind of uh, a, a, a whammer. So moving on to the Primina front, uh, we do not have any reports of fighting over this region. There is fight. Uh, there is reports of uh, shelling. At Liman, uh, the Russians actually shell a concentration of troops over at Liman uh, city. And um, the from the pro-Russian sources, they say that the the Ukrainian forces that were pushing for Shevardnadze have kind of exhausted themselves and they have moved to a, towards a defensive posture. Uh, they are unable to, you know, they are, they are now only preparing in terms of a positional fighting rather than uh, going for a, another offensive, which they have been trying for the past three weeks or more. And... Uh, and that's all from the Crimea region. Uh, over the Svetovay front, uh, the situation continues to be fluid uh, with the Ukrainians attacking uh, Kolomishiha or Kolomishchika, correct? And uh, at, uh, in Stemakivka, uh, the Ukrainian Defense Ministry said that the Russians actually attacked here. So you can see the, the front line is actually very near and uh, they are, one side is pushing this side, one side is pushing this side. So you know, the situation here is extremely fluid. Uh, we shall see how this goes. And uh, there is no... The fighting reported over at the Kupians region uh, no longer continues. You know, the fighting at Kaiserlivka, Prussia's Trafneve uh, is not repeated. And uh, so it went quiet. Maybe the, uh, the attack did not work out. They did not manage to, cap, uh, to catch the Russian forces uh, by surprise. So that's all for the summary for the day of... 270 for the 20th of November and uh, for those that are wondering uh, the last video that I posted on this main channel Defense Politics Asia uh, is a repeat of the same video that I've posted over at DPA War. Uh, the reason is, beca is because DPA War is not monetized so I need to repost it here and at the same time DPA War <clears throat> the subscribers is not even 10,000. Uh, most of you guys are still in this main channel and uh, I need to repost to remind you guys that there is actually a separate channel and uh, you guys need to go over there to subscribe over to the DPA war channel because eventually all this war reporting will be moved to the DPA war channel so uh, I need you guys to go and subscribe over there and uh, and because it's not monetized putting it on the main channel helps with uh, revenue so uh, and also you know to help to reach people that had not watched the report 
over at the DPA War channel. So it is just a means to reach more people. So you know, if you have watched it before, you know, just help me press the like button. You know, just and then you can don't watch it. Uh, just help to promote the channel. So don't be so salty, you know, and uh, don't behave like some uh, copium uh, addict, you know. Don't cope so much, you know. I'm just posting because we need to reach more people. So, you know, yeah, okay, okay. Don't cry, okay, okay. I didn't meant to say that. Uh, okay, I hug you, okay? Yeah, kiss, okay? Don't cry, don't cry, okay? I'll see you in the next update.